Top 25 Data Engineering Interview Questions and Answers In the competitive field of data engineering, preparing for interviews can be a challenging task. This video presents the top 25 interview questions and detailed answers to help candidates navigate the complexities of data engineering roles. From fundamental concepts to advanced techniques, these questions cover a wide range of topics. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced professional, this guide will equip you with essential knowledge for your upcoming interviews. 1. What are the daily responsibilities of a data engineer? A data engineer's daily responsibilities typically include designing, constructing, and maintaining scalable data pipelines that facilitate the collection, storage, and processing of large datasets. They collaborate with data scientists and analysts to understand data requirements and ensure data availability. Routine tasks also involve monitoring data quality, debugging issues in data flows, optimizing ETL processes, and managing database systems. They may also work on data modeling, implementing data governance practices, and ensuring compliance with privacy regulations. Continuous learning and staying updated with the latest tools and technologies are essential for success in this role. 2. Can you explain the differences between star, snowflake, and galaxy schemas in data modeling? The star schema features a central fact table connected to dimension tables, simplifying queries and improving performance. This design is intuitive, making it user-friendly for analytics. In contrast, the Snowflake schema normalizes dimension tables into multiple related tables, reducing data redundancy but complicating queries. The Galaxy schema, also known as a fact constellation, combines multiple stars and snowflakes, allowing for complex data relationships. It supports varied analytical needs but requires more sophisticated design and management. Each schema serves different analytical requirements and influences query performance and complexity. 3. Which ETL tools have you worked with, and what is your favorite? Why? I have experience with several ETL tools, including Apache NiFi, Talend, and Informatica. My favorite is Apache NiFi due to its user-friendly interface and strong data flow management capabilities. It allows for real-time data ingestion and enables easy integration with various data sources. The ability to build complex data workflows visually makes it efficient for handling diverse data transformation needs. Additionally, its scalability and support for data provenance give it an edge when managing large-scale data pipelines. 4. How do you ensure data quality and integrity in a data pipeline? Ensuring data quality and integrity involves multiple strategies. First, implement validation checks at various stages of the pipeline to catch errors early. This includes schema validation, range checks, and format validation. Second, use automated testing to verify data correctness after each transformation. Third, establish monitoring and alert systems to detect anomalies in real time. Additionally, maintain comprehensive logging to track data flow and identify sources of issues. Lastly, promote data stewardship by collaborating with stakeholders to define and enforce data quality standards throughout the organization. 5. What strategies do you use for handling large-scale data migrations? Handling large-scale data migrations requires meticulous planning and execution. First, I assess the data architecture and identify dependencies. This helps in determining the best migration approach, whether it's a phased migration or a big bang approach. I ensure thorough testing of the migration process in a staging environment to catch potential issues early. Utilizing automation tools can significantly speed up the migration process while minimizing human errors. Monitoring the migration in real time allows for immediate troubleshooting when issues arise. Finally, I validate data integrity post-migration to ensure that all data is accurately transferred. 6. How would you design a scalable data ingestion pipeline for real-time streaming data? Designing a scalable data ingestion pipeline for real-time streaming data involves several key components. First, choose a robust message broker like Apache Kafka or AWS Kinesis to handle data streams efficiently. Implement a microservices architecture to allow independent scaling of components. Use a schema registry to manage data formats, ensuring compatibility. Incorporate data validation and transformation processes using tools like Apache Flink or Spark Streaming. Finally, establish monitoring and alerting systems to ensure performance and reliability, enabling quick response to potential issues. 7. Can you describe a challenging data engineering project you worked on and how you overcame the obstacles? One challenging project involved migrating a legacy data warehouse to a modern cloud-based solution. The primary obstacle was ensuring minimal downtime while transferring large volumes of data. I implemented a phased migration strategy, allowing for parallel processing and validation of data in smaller batches. This approach not only minimized disruption but also allowed for thorough testing of data integrity throughout the process. Frequent communication with stakeholders ensured alignment, and by using automated tools for data quality checks, we successfully completed the migration on schedule. 8. What is your experience with big data frameworks like Apache Spark or Hadoop? 
My experience with big data frameworks includes extensive work with Apache Spark and Hadoop. I have used Spark for its ability to process large datasets quickly due to its in-memory computing capabilities. It allows for real-time data processing, which is essential for analytics. In contrast, I have utilized Hadoop for batch processing, leveraging its distributed file system, HDFS, to manage vast amounts of unstructured data. Both frameworks have been instrumental in optimizing data workflows and improving processing efficiency in projects involving big data analytics and machine learning applications. 9. How do you approach troubleshooting and debugging complex data pipelines? When troubleshooting complex data pipelines, I begin by systematically isolating components to identify where the issue originates. Utilizing logging and monitoring tools helps me track data flow and pinpoint bottlenecks or failures. I often reproduce the issue in a controlled environment, which makes it easier to test solutions without affecting production systems. Collaboration with team members can provide additional insights, as fresh perspectives often uncover overlooked aspects. Finally, documenting findings and solutions enhances future troubleshooting efforts, ensuring that similar problems can be addressed more efficiently. 10. What is your preferred method for data partitioning in pipelines, and why? Data partitioning is crucial for optimizing performance and managing large datasets. My preferred method is time-based partitioning, as it allows for efficient querying and data management. This approach organizes data by time intervals, making it easier to archive or delete older data while retaining current data accessibility. Additionally, it enhances query performance by enabling targeted scans of specific partitions rather than the entire dataset. This method is particularly beneficial for use cases involving time series data or log management, where time is a natural delineator for data organization. 11. How do you handle schema evolution in a data engineering project? Handling schema evolution involves several strategic approaches. First, it's essential to implement versioning for data schemas, allowing for changes without disrupting existing data pipelines. Utilizing a schema registry can help manage and validate these versions. When a change occurs, backward compatibility should be prioritized, ensuring older data remains accessible. Additionally, employing tools that support dynamic schema adjustments helps facilitate smooth transitions. Comprehensive testing is crucial to identify potential issues early, ensuring that data integrity is maintained throughout the evolution process. 12. Can you explain the concept of data governance and its importance in an organization? Data governance involves the management of data availability, usability, integrity, and security within an organization. It establishes policies, standards, and procedures to ensure that data is consistent and trustworthy. Effective data governance is crucial because it aids in regulatory compliance, enhances decision-making, and fosters accountability. By implementing a robust governance framework, organizations can mitigate risks associated with data breaches, ensure data quality, and promote a culture of responsibility among employees regarding data handling. This ultimately leads to better insights and improved operational efficiency. 13. What strategies do you employ to ensure data privacy and security in your pipelines? To ensure data privacy and security in data pipelines, I implement several strategies. First, I apply data encryption both at rest and in transit, ensuring that sensitive information is protected against unauthorized access. I also enforce strict access controls, using role-based access management to limit data exposure to only authorized personnel. Regular audits and compliance checks help identify vulnerabilities, while data masking techniques safeguard sensitive data during processing. Additionally, I maintain up-to-date documentation of data handling practices to ensure transparency and compliance with relevant regulations. 14. How do you optimize SQL queries for better performance? Optimizing SQL queries involves several strategies. First, analyzing execution plans helps identify bottlenecks. Using appropriate indexes accelerates data retrieval, while ensuring that queries only select necessary columns reduces I.O. overhead. Employing joins efficiently, for example by using INNERJOIN instead of LEFTJOIN when possible, can enhance performance. Additionally, avoiding subqueries in favor of JOINs can streamline operations. Lastly, regularly updating statistics and using query hints can guide the optimizer, ensuring queries run as efficiently as possible. 15. What is your experience with cloud platforms for data engineering, and how do they compare? I have worked extensively with cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform for data engineering tasks. Each offers unique services tailored for data storage, processing, and analytics. AWS provides a robust ecosystem with tools like Redshift and Glue, which facilitate scalable data warehousing and ETL processes. Azure shines with its integration into Microsoft services and offers Azure Data Factory for orchestration. Google Cloud excels in data analytics capabilities with BigQuery. Choosing a platform often depends on project requirements, existing infrastructure, and team expertise. 16. How do you implement error logging and monitoring in data pipelines? 
implementing error logging and monitoring in data pipelines involves several key steps. First, I incorporate structured logging throughout the pipeline, capturing essential metadata, error messages, and timestamps. This enables easy tracking of failures. Next, I utilize monitoring tools like Prometheus or Grafana to visualize performance metrics and error rates in real time. Alerts are set up to notify the team of critical failures, allowing for prompt investigation. Additionally, I establish a centralized logging system, such as ELK Stack, to aggregate logs from various components, facilitating easier debugging and analysis of issues. 17. Can you explain the difference between batch processing and real-time processing? Batch processing involves collecting and processing data in groups or batches at scheduled intervals. This method is efficient for large volumes of data but can introduce latency, making it unsuitable for time-sensitive applications. On the other hand, real-time processing handles data as it arrives, allowing for immediate analysis and insights. This approach is essential for applications that require instant decision-making, such as fraud detection or live analytics. Each method has its use cases, and the choice depends on the specific requirements of the application and business needs. 18. What is your approach to data modeling in a data warehouse environment? In a data warehouse environment, my approach to data modeling involves understanding business requirements first. I focus on creating a dimensional model that prioritizes usability for end users. This typically includes designing star or snowflake schemas based on the data relationships and query patterns. I emphasize normalization for fact tables and denormalization for dimension tables to optimize performance. Regular collaboration with stakeholders ensures that the model evolves with business needs. Additionally, I incorporate best practices for data governance and documentation to maintain clarity and integrity in the modeling process. 19. How do you handle data consistency issues in distributed systems? Data consistency in distributed systems can be managed through various strategies. One effective approach is employing consensus algorithms like Paxos or Raft, which help maintain agreement among nodes. Additionally, using eventual consistency models allows for temporary discrepancies while ensuring that all data will become consistent over time. Implementing versioning and conflict resolution mechanisms is also crucial to address data conflicts. Regular monitoring and testing of data flows can identify inconsistencies early, allowing for prompt corrective actions. Adopting these practices ensures a reliable and consistent data environment across distributed systems. 20. What tools or technologies do you use for workflow orchestration? In data engineering, I utilize tools like Apache Airflow, Prefect, and Luigi for workflow orchestration. Apache Airflow is particularly effective due to its rich UI and ability to schedule complex workflows based on dependencies. I appreciate Prefect for its simplicity and flexibility in defining tasks and managing state. Luigi is useful for building long-running batch processes with clear task dependencies. These tools enable me to automate processes, handle retries, and monitor the execution of workflows, ensuring efficient data pipeline management. 21. How do you stay updated with the latest trends and advancements in data engineering? Staying updated in data engineering involves a mix of continuous learning and community engagement. I regularly follow industry-leading blogs, podcasts, and online courses to deepen my understanding of emerging technologies. Participating in conferences and webinars allows me to connect with experts and learn about real-world applications. I also contribute to open source projects and engage in discussions on platforms like GitHub and LinkedIn. Networking with peers in the field helps me gain insights into best practices and innovative solutions being adopted in the industry. 22. Can you describe your experience with implementing data governance controls for regulatory compliance? Implementing data governance controls for regulatory compliance involved several key steps. First, I conducted a comprehensive data inventory to identify sensitive data and its regulatory requirements. Next, I established policies and procedures for data access, usage, and retention, ensuring alignment with standards like GDPR and HIPAAI collaborated with cross-functional teams to create awareness and provide training on compliance best practices. Regular audits and monitoring mechanisms were put in place to assess adherence to governance policies, allowing for timely adjustments and risk mitigation. 23. How would you design a system to handle both real-time streaming and batch processing? To design a system capable of handling both real-time streaming and batch processing, I would utilize a hybrid architecture. This involves leveraging a streaming platform like Apache Kafka for real-time data ingestion, ensuring low-latency processing. For batch processing, I would utilize a framework like Apache Spark, which can process large volumes of data efficiently. Data would flow into a common storage solution, such as a data lake, where both streaming and batch data can be accessed. This approach allows for flexibility in processing needs, enabling timely insights from real-time data while also supporting comprehensive analytics on batch datasets. 24. What strategies do you use for cost optimization in cloud-based data engineering solutions? Cost optimization in cloud-based data engineering involves several strategies. 
First, leveraging serverless architectures can reduce costs associated with idle resources. Using auto-scaling features ensures that compute power matches workload demands, avoiding over-provisioning. Implementing data lifecycle management helps identify and archive or delete unused data, minimizing storage expenses. Additionally, monitoring usage regularly through cloud provider tools allows for identifying underutilized resources. Utilizing reserved instances for predictable workloads can also lead to significant savings. Finally, employing efficient data processing techniques reduces compute time and costs. 25. Can you explain a time when you had to collaborate with cross-functional teams to complete a data engineering project? In a project aimed at integrating customer data from various sources, I worked closely with data scientists, product managers, and software engineers. We held regular meetings to align on objectives and ensure everyone understood their roles. I focused on building a robust data pipeline while the data scientists formulated algorithms for analysis. Close collaboration facilitated quick feedback loops, reducing misunderstandings. By establishing shared documentation and utilizing collaboration tools, we maintained transparency, which was crucial for meeting deadlines and achieving project goals. In this video, we've explored the top 25 data engineering interview questions and their answers, equipping you with the knowledge you need to excel in your interviews. Understanding these concepts can significantly boost your confidence and performance when discussing data pipelines, ETL processes, and data warehousing. Remember, preparation is key to success in any technical interview. If you found this content helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing to stay updated on future videos. Your support helps us create more valuable content for aspiring data engineers like you.